So I know when I first started, it wasn't uh, it wasn't right into cartoon world for me because it was uh, it was a hard nut to crack because I didn't know which kind of guy I was. I was reading for everything, uh, you know, from from dogs to dinosaurs to blah blah until we hit surfer dude that's when i started working and i branched off from there when was what was your first voice break when when did you how did you enter this world yeah i agree it was a hard it was a hard nut to crack and also just trying to figure out sort of who i was also and what my voice was and you know i'm i read much younger i sound much younger so um, I guess one of my first, like, my first voiceover was a Palm Olive commercial, um, and then I did a lot of commercials, and then finally the cartoon world kind of welcomed me, and I did a show called Monster by Mistake, and okay. it was this claymation thing that I did with Julie Lemieux, who's unbelievable, and she played this little boy, and I played her sort of this tomboy. So tomboys started becoming my thing. I think people like to cast me as a tomboy because I don't have a super girly, girly voice. And, uh, but I do have that young quality. So yeah, that sort of, I realized, um, was my niche. And then we kind of focused on that, my agent and I, and I guess I tend to play that sort of age range, you know, like that 13 to 16 year old, mm -hmm. uh, tomboy girl that kicks ass. And, uh, you know, all my characters have been very different. In fact, I also voice a character called, she's a stink aardvark. Her name is Melodia on Yin Yang Yo. And that's a French, she's French, and she's got more of a voice like this, um, <laughs> <laughs> with a slight of French accent. Um, so it's, you know, that's not so tomboyish. <laughs> no, no. So, you know, we get to go off and, like, I think voice work for me is definitely, like, my most creative, because you, you, you can see who I am. You're not about to hire me as, like, a, I'm not going to play a seven-year-old grandmother right now. I'm not going to play a, a six-year-old in live action, but as a voice actor, I yeah. certainly can. You know, and so it's so freeing. We love it, don't we? Well, what was uh, what, what? Speaking of voice, well, what what are some of the places where they might have heard your voices, your voice on uh, on uh, commercials or uh, like? Weren't you the spokeswoman for? I did all those clear blue ads. That's like, that was, it. Yeah, I was the voice for clear blue. They now have a British man doing them. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> that that makes me want to take a pregnancy test. Let me tell you. Yeah, um, how'd that work out for you? <laughs> Yeah, it didn't work. As soon as it went British man, I lost. Uh, yeah, I lost it. Um, anyway, yeah, I was sort of like played the big sister sort of character for that. And um, yeah, that's what I would say. That was like, that was a very good campaign for me. And I've done a lot of like, you know, I did the voice of Molson for a while. Like little that's like that right. type of stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, what other kind of yeah. cartoons? Where, what, what cartoons? Somebody... Well, you know, my most, I think. Both, I don't know. Would sixteen be your sort of most mem be your most memorable? Like, what cartoon stands out for you? For you, uh, sixteen for sure, because that sort of paved the. Um, yeah, I mean too. It opened me it too. wide open, you know, thanks to yeah. uh, Tom, Tom and Jennifer and, and Jennifer and at, everyone at Fresh. At, yeah, that that's the one that sort of launched me into where I found my voice, my cartoon voice, or my brand. That's where it started. Was. Uh, uh, 16, but oddly enough, I auditioned for Sidekick two weeks before 16. And? Well, we're doing Sidekick now. That just shows you how long it takes for cartoons that's to get made. That's a long time. It's like seven six, years ago. Yeah, seven years ago, because that's when like 16 just finished, and yeah. we started like seven years ago. Yeah, that was, I'd say, my biggest sort of a break in the world, but you and I also did this amazing cartoon that I really <gasps> wish had gone Foolish Girl. Uh, you can watch it. It's Foolish Girl. Foolish Girl. It's on YouTube. So smart, so bright. I'm Foolish Girl. Christian is that guy. Um, that, there's that's a character, name, that guy. Coffee Slut. There's um, it's all it's all uh, roommate. The roommate. That was a cartoon boss. I thought it was gonna go. To. I thought it was going to. Fly. It was ahead of its time. But and check it, it out. Check it out, Foolish Girl. And I played um, that guy. That guy who <laughs> she was. In, in want, love with in love him. with my character. Oh, in, lo in love with mm -hmm, him. Mm -hmm. He's that guy, and I was so into him. And the the animation is amazing. That Vesna is the uh, artist. She had an underground comment called Foolish Girl, and yep. it finally got picked up and didn't go. And I can't believe it didn't go. But uh, anyway, that was I think that's a character that I just I still feel very passionate about, and I'm brokenhearted that it never went somewhere. But uh, 
But now doing 16 and being Jen, what oh, is... I love being Jen. It was, that was fun working on that, that show. That was the best. Like we, the six of us, the first year, were in the booth together every session. They got, they were very long sessions. <laughs> I think we pissed off a lot of people. <laughs> but we had so much fun. And I think that's why second season, we all went in individually. <laughs> they were like, yeah, time is money. Dude's I, out of the booth together. <laughs> what is, uh, what's one of your favorite if you can recall one of your favorite gen moments or 16 moments like well do you want to do like 16 in the booth or just actually in the cartoon anything anything, anything. um I, I mean I remember most of my 16 episodes what would be my most favorite episode well we're getting close to the end I sort of ah this is a tough question I know I it's so hard much of Jen um, I think, you know, the ones when, with Jen was always sort of found in compromising situations. Um, I think some of the episodes where I was, I got naked because I didn't mean to get naked. I was right. walked in on naked. <laughs> um, I think the five finger discount episode where Jen Masterson decides to pocket a ski jacket because she can't afford it. And all the friends sort of band together and say, we don't shoplift. I, think I love that episode because it was a great it was a great message to say don't shoplift obviously but it also showed this amazing girl me yeah. Jen <laughs> who you know does no wrong at a moment of weakness and uh, it shows that you know we all have our faults we all we go all through it we all go through it and uh, and it was a good it was a good one for me because I really I think out of all my characters that I've played and uh, and I'm still playing I I am closest to Jen Masterson oh. for sure even though. I'm like almost twice her age. <laughs> I'm a few years older than her. Um, but I feel, I definitely feel like I, Jen lives on inside of me. And yeah, uh, yeah I, it's, it's, I'm sad that the show's done. Uh, just a note, that end scene where we're all saying goodbye in Ugh. 16, we were all brought in separately and uh, every single one of us it was cry. Did you cry? I, I was bawled. bawling. If you talk about it for any length of time here, I'll start crying again. Yeah. And the song. Yeah. The song they did. It was like. See, cartoons. Move. It can us. make you cry. They can make you they're, cry. They're not just funny and entertaining. So tell your parents, you know, when they say, why are you watching cartoons? They're just going to turn your head into a mush. You just say, mom, I cried. I cried. I cried. I cried. Um, do you get stopped a lot? By people you know once they I, hear your voice? You know when I got stopped? I did a commercial for Molson. It was uh, a little, the little tagline was, uh, no one shaves during the playoffs. And it was played during the, obviously the playoffs. And um, it was a hockey dressing room. It sort of starts out in a hockey dressing room. You guys should YouTube this. Yeah. It's Molson Canadian Hairy Legs. And uh, it basically pans this hockey dressing room and all these like hockey players and equipment coming off. And it focuses on the, this pair of obviously hairy legs, you know, you're assuming it's a guy's change room and the legs suddenly cross and the camera pans up and it's me. And I'm like, what? No one shaves during the playoffs. Blink, blink, blink. I do. I blink three times. Um, and after that commercial, I was stopped everywhere. Yeah. Like I'd, I'd be doing groceries, you know, and yeah. I'd see somebody sort of eyeballing my legs and just taking a look. <laughs> Which are obviously <laughs> not hairy. <laughs> Don't lift up my pant leg. <laughs> it's the playoffs. <laughs> anyway, that's that's, right. I think that was my biggest claim to fame. It's kind of sad, but at the same time, I'd go back there in a second. 